Maurizio Porfiri specializes in designing robotic fish. And here's the goal. Deploy robots in uh, the environment and use them like sheep dogs to guide schools of uh, live fish. Yes, robotic, aquatic, pied pipers that could escort fish to safety in the case of an oil spill, for example. Sound fish improbable? Take a look at this. Porfiri discovered this a few years ago. In fact, we did a video about it. He saw that fish, in this case giant danios, would follow, or at least mill about, his robot. And since then, he's been trying to understand why. But he's not a biologist. No, absolutely, by any stretch. So, uh, I, I, I am a mechanical engineer, so the focus of the study is uh, mostly on uh, the hydrodynamics. Specifically, does the robot's tail flapping and Porfiri designed the tail intentionally to move water like a real fish, provide any clues for why the real fish are following the robotic leader. To test that, Porfiri, or one of his grad students, puts the robot and a real fish in a water tunnel where the water flow and the robotic tail speed can be controlled. And what we find is uh, that beating the tail makes a difference. So if, you, if the robot doesn't beat the tail, fish won't care. The fish move about randomly, but... You can attract 50, 60, 70 percent of the animals if you beat the tail in an appropriate uh, manner. So what's the frequency that it likes? Twice per second, two beats per second. At two beats per second, at least for certain water flow speeds, most fish position themselves here. And this may be a good spot because fish in this spot don't have to beat their tail as fast to stay in place, Porfiri says, suggesting the robot is... Providing an energy saving to the animal. It's aquatic drafting. Yeah, exactly. And when they measure the flow of water around the beating tail, using titanium particles and a laser beam, they find that the tail does indeed shoot vortices, these little swirls of water, towards where the fish is sitting, which may help propel it. So that could explain why the fish sits here, in this water tunnel. But Porfiri says it also may play a role in how fish organize themselves in schools. So the argument is that some behavioral pattern may be modified by something more fundamental, like getting a hydrodynamic advantage. And the idea that hydrodynamics can guide behavior can also guide engineers who want to build lifelike robots. So typically, when you speak of biomimicry, you tend to give a very uh, human-centered interpretation. So you speak of biomimicry if it looks like. Yeah, in this case, we try to fake what the fish feel rather than what the fish sees. Porfiri thinks this may be part of the reason why real fish respond to his robot. It doesn't look like a real fish, but it feels like one. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.